Hi, I'm Tommy Henderson here today with Henderson's Lineup Super Steer, and today we're going to be installing a set of the SS404RR radius rods on a 2020 Ford F53 chassis, 18 kgvw, and this is the new V8. So with that, uh, let's just start by talking about preparation for the coach. So obviously we have the benefit of our Coney lifts to get the coach up in the air. Uh, if you're doing this at home, first you want to make sure that the coach is safe to be underneath. So you want to have your uh, wheels chalked and you want to have the coach at normal ride height. You don't want it lifted up by the leveler. So if you have to use uh, a pit or ramps to gain access under the front of the coach, that's okay. But you do want the weight on the suspension. All right, so here we've got our install instructions and our parts all laid out. So just want to go down the list to make sure that all of the parts we need are here. So first, we've got two of our SS404-2 rod assemblies. So that's the rod along with the end and the nut, 404-2. Note that the, uh, the jam nut is on the rod assembly, so that's item number two. Here's our B1058 axle bracket, which is on the driver's side and our B1059, which will be for the passenger side. Note that they are not the same. The driver's side one does have a cutout. Our SS403-2 frame brackets, those are the same. Then we have our four three-quarter inch bolts. One, two, three, four there, along with a lock nut for each bolt and two flat washers for each bolt. Then we have 12 flat washers for all of our half inch bolts. And speaking of half inch bolts, I do want to note that we have four that are two inches long. These will be used to mount the axle brackets to the axle. And then we have two one and three quarter inches long. So you don't want to get those confused um, otherwise you'll have to go back and swap the bolts out. Those two inch and three quarter bolts, those are used to attach your frame brackets. Finally, we have our Loctite, which is an important part of the process just to make sure that everything stays secure. So then from there, we can talk about the tools needed. These uh, V8 coaches, there typically is some drilling involved. That's gonna need to be uh, about a half inch diameter hole through one layer of the frame, which we'll get to in the installation process, but just wanna make you aware. Typically we use a step bit. You can do it with uh, just a half inch drill bit. It may be necessary to ream that hole out a little bit because you do have to come at it from an angle. So that's where our die grinder comes in. Sometimes we see some huck bolts also get somewhat close to the radius rods as they're installed. So a cutoff wheel can be used to just to cut the ends of those huck bolts off. Uh, that portion of the bolt is not doing anything, so it's not a problem to cut them off. Then we have our impact wrench. Uh, we have our various sockets. So for the uh, spring eye bolts, you're going to need a 21 millimeter socket and a 15 16 end wrench. For our sway bar bolts, we're going to need a 15 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter end wrench to take the factory bolts off. And then to attach our replacement bolts, you're gonna be using a three quarter inch uh, socket and wrench. And then finally to uh, attach the, uh, or to, to fasten the rod end bolts, you're gonna need an inch and an eighth socket and an inch and an eighth end wrench for those three quarter inch diameter bolts. And finally, you'll want a torque wrench to make sure that all of your torque is uh, properly set. And eye protection, very important when you're underneath the coach. Okay, so first up, we wanna get the nut off of each of our spring eye bolts. And to do that, you gotta come from the outside, use your 21 millimeter socket on your impact wrench and 15 16 end wrench on the nut. You wanna be really sure that you are not taking this bolt out. You need to get the impact wrench on the bolt to get the nut off, but the bolt stays in place. That's what's holding this spring uh, to the hanger here. So you wanna, you wanna gun that uh, bolt just enough to get the nut off. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So now I'm removing the nut from the spring eye bolt. We wanna save this. We're gonna reuse it with some Loctite. You can see the bolt is still extending all the way through. We have plenty of exposed thread here, so there's no danger of this uh, coming out of place, but you wanna make sure that the bolt is still extending through this side of the uh, bracket. So now that we've removed the nut from the spring eye bolt, 
we're going to hold our frame bracket up in place and just check the fitment. So it's going to go, the spring eye bolt is going to go through this forward hole. And the ear on the one side will go up against the frame. Now on these V8 coaches, there is a hole through one layer of the frame. So what we're going to need to do is drill through the second layer of frame. And that is a challenge because of the spring being underneath here. So we're just going to have to come at it from a bit of an angle. It may be necessary to enlarge the hole a little bit, uh, but uh, we just want to get enough space for that half inch bolt to go through and to hold this bracket in place like so. So let's go ahead and get started drilling. All right. On the video, it looked like that only took a few seconds, but in real life, it, uh, it took a little bit longer. One thing that I should have mentioned earlier is you'll also want some cutting oil to use with your drill bit to make sure you don't burn it up. So now that I am through, we're going to go ahead and check to see how our bolt fits through there. So because we had to drill through that second layer of frame at an angle, you may find that when that bolt goes through, it also wants to be at an angle. That's where the die grinder can come in to just enlarge that hole a little bit. So now that I've drilled through, I'm happy with that angle on the bolt. We're going to go ahead and put our frame bracket in place. Use our inch and three quarter long half inch diameter bolt with a washer. Put that through. We'll hold that in place. Get our other washer and the nut on the top. Now that the hole is nice and straight where the bolt can be straight as well, we've got it through with the washer. Then on, on the top, we've got our washer and our lock nut just started for now. We'll go ahead and get our spring eye bolt tightened again, and then we'll tighten this up. All right, now we're going to put our spring eye nut back in place, and we want to use some of our supplied red Loctite uh, before we put that back on. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to hit the bolt with the gun to get it back through now that we have our frame bracket in place. Get some Loctite on the bolt. Be pretty generous with that. We don't want this coming loose. Get the nut started. Hit this with the gun. Just get it snug, then we'll come back with a torque wrench. Okay, now that I've snugged up the spring eye bolt, before I torque that down, I also want to snug down our bolt going through the frame rail here. All right, now that both the spring eye bolt and our half inch bolt going through the frame there are snugged up, we're going to use our torque wrench to tighten them up to spec. So the spring eye bolt, again, we've used plenty of Loctite on that. We're going to take that to about 130 foot-pounds. Our instructions call for 120 to 140. With our spring eye bolt properly torqued, we'll go ahead and mark it. It's an important safety tip we always like to follow. One, to make sure that uh, we're keeping things tightened as we go. And also so you can see if anything has backed off over time, you'll have your mark from the bracket to the nut. So if it rotates at all, you'll be able to tell. Now with the front spring eye bolt torqued, we're going to go ahead and check the torque, set the torque on our half inch bolt going through the frame. Got our torque wrench sent to 80 foot pounds. And like before, we're marking our bolt here just to show that we have torqued that. Now that we've completed the passenger side, we're going to repeat this exact same process on the driver's side. All right, we've got our spring eye nut taken loose. Now on this side, we found the, uh, the hole is already drilled through both layers of the frame. And in most cases, it is just on the passenger side where you have to drill through that second layer of frame. So in our case, we don't have to do that on the driver's side. That significantly uh, speeds up the installation. Alright, that's good. Alright, now that we have both of our frame brackets installed, we're going to start uh, installing our axle brackets. Again, we'll start with the passenger side. 
So we're going to remove the factory bolts from our sway bar saddle bracket. Uh, we're going to do just one at a time because that will allow us to not have to support the weight of the sway bar. This bar is quite heavy, so by doing just the one side, we'll be able to slip our new bracket in there and replace the hardware uh, without having to fully drop the bar and raise it back up. All right, now we're going to take our B1059 passenger side axle bracket and put it in place. So again, pay attention to make sure that you're using the correct bracket per side. Uh, you can tell the eyelet will go toward the outside of the coach. Okay. All right, so now we're going to put our new half inch diameter, two inch long bolts through our saddle bracket. All right, we've got one of our bolts through, just using a screwdriver, just something to pry a little bit to get the alignment uh, so that the bolt can go through uh, all the brackets. We use our gun. All right. Okay, now with uh, both of our bolts started, we've got washers on both sides, our lock nuts on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit them with the gun to get them snug, and then we'll come back with the torque wrench to make sure that they're properly tightened. Now we're going to repeat that process on the other side with the driver's side bracket. So now as we're in the process of uh, installing our driver's side axle bracket, I do want to note to get the best clearance between your radius rod assembly and the frame, you want to make sure that this bracket is dropped down as far as it will go. So you can see just looking through the holes there, the, uh, the holes in the axle bracket are slotted. We have this right now resting as far downward as it will go. So you don't, you could tighten it up with it all the way up here, but that's going to reduce your clearance to the frame. So just want to make sure you get the best clearance possible when you're installing it. So one thing to note is that the holes in the, uh, the sway bar bracket on the axle may be just slightly undersized to accept a half inch bolt. It may be necessary to ream those out just a little bit to get up to that half inch size. So because we've taken the time to ream out the holes in the axle bracket a bit, these half inch bolts will fit quite a bit more easily within that bracket. Now that we've put all of our bolts in place that are holding our axle brackets and our sway bar to the axle, I do want to note one thing before I torque these, that in some cases on the newer V8s, this casting has changed ever so slightly to where we do see some interference between it and the axle bracket. And in those cases, it is necessary just to sand down that corner. I didn't have to on this coach, it's a 2020, uh, but on some of the newer V8s, we are seeing that. Now with both sides in place and snugged, I'm going to torque all, all four bolts down to uh, about 80 foot-pounds. All right, now with our axle brackets properly torqued, we're going to take our uh, radius rod, so our rod assembly, the SS404-2. I'm going to take it and just check to see how it's going to fit. So the dog leg is going to go towards the back and pointing inward. So what we're doing is clearing that track bar mount. So now that we have this side loosely installed, we're gonna set our length and it may take a few spins to get the hole in the track rod to line up with the hole in the bracket. We're uh, pretty much right there now. So same as in the back, we're gonna take our three quarter inch bolt do a flat washer on both sides of the bushing, put it through there, get the nut started. All right, now with the rod loosely installed, both of the nuts started, we're going to use our gun and uh, just snug those down. Okay, now that uh, we've gotten them snug down, we're going to go ahead and use our torque wrench to uh, set the torque on these. We'll go about 135. Instructions call for 120 to 150.
All right, and now we're going to go ahead and tighten our jam nut down. So we'll put a dab of red Loctite on there. Be sure that you tighten the jam nut down against the length of the rod. We have seen them done against this end and it's not doing anything at that point. All right, and now we'll repeat that process on the other side. Okay, now that we have our radius rods installed on both sides, everything torqued to spec, one last thing that we need to look at is if there's any potential clearance issues between the radius rods and huck bolts. So here you can see an example of a huck bolt where the radius rod could potentially come up and contact that. Just to be safe, we're gonna go ahead and trim that down because all of this exposed portion of that bolt is not doing anything. They're only used in the installation uh, or in the assembly of the chassis of the coach. So at this point, you can safely trim that as long as you're leaving all of this portion in place. So only the gray threaded portion, trim that down. And uh, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now that we've trimmed our huck bolts and everything has already been properly torqued, that completes our installation. So next step would be to test drive and enjoy the difference. We would encourage you to go back and recheck torque within 50, 100 miles just to make sure. But uh, if you uh, do have any questions about the installation process, you can always reach us at sales at supersteerparts.com or 888-898-3281. And until next time, we wish you safer and happier driving. Mm -hmm.